This is Grassland Studios, and welcome back to our perspective drawing series. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to properly draw a cube in two point perspective. Now, I've seen a lot of artists who have used vanishing points and forgotten about measuring points, and so their cubes have been incorrectly made. I'm going to show you how to make them technically correct. And this is very important because, as we've shown in our videos, you can bisect cubes, you can expand upon cubes and flat surfaces, and you can really do a lot by properly making a cube and making the whole drawing out of it by expanding outward. So it's very important that you make this correctly. Because if you can create a cube correctly in the beginning, you no longer need your guidelines. You can really just make a whole drawing as you expand outwards with simple tips and tricks that come with perspective drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn down the opacity just so that you can really see the cube here. Now, first I'm going to go ahead and create an arbitrary cube. Let's say it's about so. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about what you do. If we're drawing on paper, and remember that digital is just a tool, I'm just using it so you can see more clearly. You're going to want to create a line of how big you want your cube to be from the front side. Now, this is very important because this exact measurement needs to be measured horizontally in both directions. It's going to be used as your measuring line. And I'll show you how that works. So in this case, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to replicate this. And if you are using paper, what you want to do is you want to find the measurement that you have just made and you want to draw that on both sides, you're going to end up basically making a T-shape. This T-shape will be the guidelines for how you use your measuring points. So, no matter what we're drawing on, we want to make sure that several things are true. One is that all of these sides are symmetrical. They are all the exact same distance. Now, Let's go ahead and draw towards the vanishing points. When we draw towards the vanishing points, we need to make sure that we're keeping our actual measurements into account. So we've just drawn towards the vanishing points. And really how we determine where the cube ends is from the measuring point. We draw to the opposite measuring point. Remember, the measuring points are equal distant to their corresponding vanishing point as the vanishing point is from the station point. So we've now just determined by where this bisects the face of the surface of the cube. And if we draw straight up, that is the dimension of the cube. If we then draw from this side to the vanishing point, and we draw from the top to the vanishing point, we can draw from this side towards the measuring point. Now, why is it that we know that this works? Well, as we talked about with earlier videos, if we are drawing from a specific character, like the character Bob we used in the reference points translating video, we know that if we draw horizontal lines across from the top and bottom of one particular line, all across that line for that specific distance, that height will hold true. In other words, as we said within that video, if we were to grab horizontal lines and we drew, for instance, across here, we know that at this point, all of that would remain, for example, if this were one foot cube, at one foot. So this is very important because we know that if we were to lie at a 45 degree angle downwards, say from the top of the cube to right here, that would create a 45 degree angle, which means that if we drew that to the measuring point in the distance with the measuring point acting as a reference point, that would be the correct surface uh, area of the cube in the distance. So let's go back to our drawing. We want to do the same thing on this side that we did with the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and create a line and I'm going to draw straight up to right here. And make that a little bit more clear. I'm just going to go ahead and use a ruler in this case. And I'd recommend that you do use a ruler unless you are sketching freehand. 
Now you've just created the opposite side of the cube. Now how does this work? Well, from here on, we no longer need the measuring points. We can simply use the vanishing points. We can simply draw to vanishing point 2 and draw from the bottom to, measuring, uh, to vanishing point 1. From here, this area by which they bisect, that's going to be the area upon which the back side of the cube is formed. Drawing back to vanishing point 1, this area from this intersection straight up becomes the back side of the cube. And then you've just created your cube properly. So that is how you actually measure at a cube by using measuring points properly. It's very important that at all times the measuring points be used properly within the drawing and that the cube remain accurate to its form. It's not correct to just use the vanishing points because we're not actually taking the correct measurements from the side of that one first line lying down on its side. You can then therefore from this point after making a singular, singular perfect cube bisect and expand outwards to create a three-dimensional object by just using this. From here on out, if you technically wanted to, you could just use this cube to make an entire drawing. And that's why creating a cube correctly is so important. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next session.